Okay, today I'd like to talk about a couple of problem solving activities that can be done in the classroom. They're very easy to do and not expensive at all. Great for teaching the uh, problem solving process and uh, shows how shape is used in engineering. The two activities that I like to do are called the uh, paper tower and the paper box. The paper tower is usually the first one that I do with a class. It's great to get to know the kids and see how well they work together. Um, I allow them to work um, in groups up to three. Um, if they want to work on their own, that's okay. Um, sometimes the, uh, the, the person working by themselves does better than a, a group of three. So <clears throat> the paper tower is very simple. All I do is give them one sheet of paper and one foot of tape. Okay, and the way I give them the tape is by putting it on a ruler. Because they're going to need a ruler anyway. So be beforehand, I'll take all my rulers that I'm going to hand out and just put a piece of tape on the ruler itself. That way all I have to do is hand out the ruler and the tape is already there with them. So that's all I need is a pair of scissors, a piece of tape, and the ruler with the tape on it. And it's really easy to just take that tape off and uh, just hang it from the table and they can cut off pieces as they need it. So before they do this activity, I go through a couple of um, lessons with them. I, I show them some metal. Now these, these two are the exact same amount of metal, but this one has no shape to it and it's fairly flimsy. I can bend it real easy, no problem, and it's not very strong. So if we made a bridge out of something like this, it was just a flat piece of metal and something were to go across it, it would start bending and it wouldn't be very safe. This other one, exact same piece of metal, but because of the shape, it makes it a lot harder to bend. Okay, and uh, if you had to choose between one or the other to make the bridge out of, you'd probably pick this one, and it's the exact same amount of material. It's the shape that does the work and makes it stronger. The same thing in cardboard. Cardboard has all these different layers and some of them are bent into that shape that you can see there. Now if they made cardboard out of the exact same amount of paper but kept them all flat and just made one flat piece of five pieces glued together, uh, it wouldn't be nearly as strong. And this helps to insulate it and do all sorts of other things too. So shape is very important in strength and lots of other functions. Next is the tape measure. Uh, you're going to need a tape measure anyway to measure the towers. And so, as you can see, a tape measure is curved. And that helps to make it strong. And you can take it out quite a ways before it starts to bend. Sometimes if I see a student not paying attention, I'll extend it way out and just tap them on the shoulder a little bit to get their attention again. Um, then I like to show the fact that it's only strong in one direction. If you turn it over, it easily collapses. And that's because it's not a full circle. And that, that aspect of it is really important because it's important for it to be able to collapse and roll up inside the mechanism. All right. So as far as rules go for the paper tower, um, only one sheet of paper. If you mess up, you can return all the paper and get a new sheet of paper. And if you use any tape, you can get more tape so that you're using a total of one sheet of paper and one foot of tape in the tower. But if you do make a mistake, I do allow people to start over. Um, I like to show the students how to you know, shape the paper a little bit before we start. So uh, we'll take a sheet of paper and we'll fold it up and that, that makes it so it's able to stand. Okay. If you've ever been in a hot room, you don't take a flat sheet of paper 
and try to fan yourself, that doesn't work. Usually people like to, you know, create some folds in it. And that makes it stronger. If you've ever seen a fan, it usually has a lot of folds in it, and that makes the paper able to stay stiff and not bend. So shape is used in this activity quite a bit. So if you don't put shape to the paper, it's just going to collapse. Now, a single sheet by itself, just folded, is not going to be tall enough. The requirement is to have a tower that's at least two feet tall, and that's actually quite easy. You know, even if you just folded it in half, and uh, say you, you cut that in half, of each of those so you did that one and then you did another one and you just connected them like that use some tape and connect them that would get you almost two feet tall because these are 11 inches, that's 22 inches. I'm using another inch to overlap them, so I'm, I'm shy three inches here, which would be really easy to make up by just cutting a small three inch piece of paper off of here, or four inches, and putting it on there. So two feet is very simple, but uh, uh, I want people to try to shoot for something higher than that. There's a, and this is the simplest design. One fold works, but if you start using circles and triangular pillars, there's all sorts of things that you can do to make this paper stronger. Now, once you get up higher, you're going to want to use smaller pieces of paper. If you put a big, huge piece like this on top, it's going to be very tipsy. Okay, there's two things you got to worry about. Well, number one is strength, which is achieved with shape. The other one is stability. You know, this thing is going to want to tip over. So you can add you know, little kickstands coming out and stuff like that. But as far as the very tippy top of the uh, tower, a cool thing to do is cut a really thin piece of paper and fold it in half. Now keep if if I don't fold it, it's going to bend over real easily. So just by adding a single fold going all the way up, we can make this a lot stiffer and it would go on the tower making it a lot taller. So imagine those three together. That would probably give you about 30 inches which is plenty. So, uh, One of the things I like to do to, to encourage the students to go higher than two feet, because two feet is obviously easy, is to offer them a reward for four feet. So I say if you get to four feet, then, then you'll get some candy. Um, and the, the record, the all-time record, is six foot eight. So if they beat that one, then I'll give them a, a bigger reward. And also I'll give a, a bigger reward to the tallest tower in the class. So that, that's the, uh, the paper tower. Um, and going through this process, I have them have a, they have a worksheet that goes through the problem solving process. And uh, they have to fill out that worksheet and show the ideas that they came up with. They have to draw what the tower looks like. and. Uh, but the first day, we, we don't have enough time to really build good towers. So the second day, I give them the whole period, and they try again. And uh, they learn from their mistakes. And so this is a, a two-day activity. The first day, I go through the, the uh, how-to part that I just showed you. Then the second day, they get the entire period to work on a new tower.
because I like them to improve upon what they do. Okay, then the next lesson is called the paper box. And that one involves a little bit more materials. I get some 3x5 index cards. Okay. And so I'll give each group, again, groups of one to three people. I'll give each group five index cards. So five index cards. And one sheet of paper. Tape. I'll give them four feet of tape. Now, I, I won't want them to grab four rulers because that's a lot of rulers. So I'll take one ruler and I'll put one, two, three, and then four feet of tape onto one ruler. Then I'll give that to the group so they have all four feet there. So again, putting the tape on the ruler is just a fast way of handing out tape rather than having to measure each piece for each group. All right, so the paper box is more about strength than anything. The paper tower has a little bit of stability in there because it has to go really tall. This one, they all are the exact same size, but you're trying to make them stronger. Okay. So they, they each make a, a box, or you could call it a house, whatever you want to do with that. Call it the paper house. You have to take two of those index cards and fold them in half to make our structure. So let's say this is our house or a building or whatever we're, we're making, just a small model of it. So it's going to be square. I'll use this tape. All right, so this part is required. They have to do this much. Every paper box has to be the exact same size. So I'll put a piece of tape on there, half on, half off. Another piece of tape on this one, half on, half off. And then We'll assemble it, put them right next to each other. Don't overlap them. We'll just butt them together. And put the tape on there. Bring it around. And put the tape on that one. All right. Now we have a, a box. And what we're going to do later is we're going to crush them this, in this direction. And so they have to do something to the box to make it stronger. So that when I crush it, it has to hold at least 50 pounds. Now usually when I say that, people freak out. Because it's just paper. How could paper hold 50 pounds? Especially when all I have left are three index cards and one sheet of paper. Well... That's when we go through some experiments. Okay, so I'll take one of those index cards and I'll roll it up like this. Okay, and we'll put a piece of tape on there. Let's see, usually I like to make the first one big, a bigger circle, and then I'll give it to a student and say, "You have to keep your hands straight up and down." I mean parallel with each other and try to crush this circle. And it's usually pretty easy for them. You know, it takes quite a bit of force, but eventually they're able to crush it. Okay. And then I take another index card and on this one it's probably easier to put the tape on now. I'll put the tape on there. And we'll roll it up. And 
and this one will make a lot smaller. Okay. All right. So a much smaller one, and then I give that to a student and have them try to crush that one. Well, that one's going to take a lot more force. It's probably going to hurt their hand because it's going to dig in quite a bit. And then the, the, hopefully they'll start to realize that uh, smaller shapes that overlap work really well in making things stronger. Okay, so they can make some pillars out of that. All right. Now keep in mind they also have this entire sheet of blue of paper. Doesn't have to be blue. Um, that they can take that index card and put it on there and and uh, make more index cards. They don't have to be exactly the size of an index card, but um, you want all of your pillars to be the same height. So they need to do some brainstorming. Are are circles the best? Do they want to try making some square pillars or triangle pillars? Um, do they want to do some wavy things, kind of like the uh, cardboard? Okay, all sorts of different shapes that they could try. All right. Now this takes a little bit longer to make because there's a lot more things, little little things that they have to make. So we'll, we'll start this activity one day, and then we'll have to store all the. Uh, the parts and then continue the next. And so it's a, again another two day activity so usually this, this fill, these two activities together fill up a week of instruction and uh, it's all for my you know, kind of a construction and engineering unit where they learn about shapes used in manufacturing and construction. I use this in my seventh grade class with more beginning students. Um, so how do we test this? Because we want to be able to find out exactly how much weight this holds. I have a, a trick for that, so I'll go up to the shop and show you how I test the strength of these. All right, for testing, basically all I do is get a, a bathroom scale, uh, some pieces of wood, and uh, use a a large drill press. If you have a arbor press or something similar, that'll work. So basically, I put the box on the wood there and put this one on top of that. Lower it down there so there's enough room. So I'll put the piece of wood on top like that and then bring down the drill press to smash the box that way. Okay, and then as I'm smashing it, you can watch the scale go up. And so, the objective is to get to 50 pounds, and uh, the record for this one is uh, 330 pounds. So, paper can be really strong if you know how to shape it. And so those are my two problem solving activities that use paper and tape. So um, hopefully you can use those and, and uh, have some fun with it. It's a good thing just to do as a uh, little project at home just to challenge your family. And it's also really great for school classrooms or scouts. All sorts of you know, act, you know, activities can be done. and. Uh, Hopefully you enjoy this and have fun with it.